Peggy 12. Single ships are of little use, because they have neither a captain nor crew. You can only actively use a ship after you have either converted it into a convoy or added it to an existing one. To add a ship to an existing convoy, both convoy and ship must lie at anchor in the same port, and the convoy must be selected. Then you can enter the harbour master's office. Here the harbour is displayed on the left, with the selected convoy on the right. You can now add the ship to the convoy by selecting it on the left. The free ship is now gone from the harbour, as only the largest ship in a convoy is shown. Your convoy now has two ships. The cargo space and number of cannons have increased accordingly. The convoy display is divided into different areas. Under goods, you see the goods loaded. The next area is particularly interesting. It shows your convoy's fighting strength. Per convoy, you can define up to three ships which are to defend the convoy in case of battle. You can let these battles run in the background. You can also fight any battle yourself and control your escort ships manually. As long as no escort vessels are defined, the convoy's fighting strength is zero. The number next to that shows how great it could be if you declare the strongest ships battleships. You can have this done automatically. You can also manage your escort ships yourself, but more on that later. The important thing is that fighting strength is mostly determined by cannons and a ship's condition. But the sailors also play a major role. Your cannons reload fastest when your convoy has at least four sailors available per escort ship cannon. This will maximize your convoy's fighting strength. Whenever you meet another convoy on the chart, you can immediately see its fighting strength. This way, you can estimate how good your chances against that convoy would be. One more thing. The captain area lets you see how much your convoy costs per day. Every ship requires a certain upkeep, from which the captain and crew are paid. There are also additional costs for any additional sailors hired. This overview also shows you what experience your captain has, Captains automatically learn more when they perform certain tasks. For example, if a captain is often embroiled in naval battles, his battle experience increases. There are also extra teachers for captains in the Caribbean, whom you will sooner or later meet in the city taverns. They will train your captains for a fee. If a convoy does become embroiled in a naval battle, only the two convoy's escort ships will fight one another. You can define up to three of a convoy's ships as escort ships. You can have them selected automatically, or you can manage your escort ships yourself. To do so, you must select the Organize function in the Convoy Overview. This opens a dialogue where you can select your escort ships yourself. While the automatic select always chooses the most powerful ships as escort ships, this method allows you to select more agile ships, for example. A ship's fighting strength depends mainly upon its condition and the number of cannons it carries. But the sailors also play a major role these will be distributed amongst the escort ships at the beginning of a battle, where they reduce the reload time for the cannons. This is shortest when at least four sailors are available per cannon. Such convoys, therefore, have a greater fighting strength. 
Each escort ship is capable of carrying a certain number of sailors, depending upon its size. You should therefore ensure that your convoy has at least as many sailors as will fit on your escort ships. You can hire new sailors using the docks equipment dialogue. The important thing is that sailors are recruited from amongst the city's free settlers, just as the workers are. Just how many sailors you can hire, however, depends on your popularity in the city. You will only be able to hire all the available settlers as sailors if it is very high. Otherwise, you will only be able to hire a certain proportion of them. Besides the sailors themselves, the equipment dialogue also offers you hand weapons for those sailors. It is best if the convoy has one hand weapon for every sailor, because if it comes to boarding during a naval battle, sailors with hand weapons are naturally more powerful. Swords are more important than muskets, but you still should not ignore muskets. It is best if your convoy has more than three times as many swords as muskets. Before boarding or being boarded, each sailor takes a weapon according to the ratio of the weapons on board. While settlers come on the great treasure fleets from Europe and are then distributed amongst the cities using trade convoys, handguns are produced in the cities themselves. You may therefore have to approach several cities to equip your convoy to the full. Only your convoy's escort ships take part in any naval battle. This allows you to maintain control of your ships no matter how large your convoy is. During battle, you always control one ship directly. To fire, you have to get an opponent into your cannon's firing range. A crosshair then appears under the opponent. Ideally, it will glow green. When firing, only the side which can actually hit the target is fired. As soon as you fired a broadside, the loading status of the currently selected ammunition will be displayed up here. Each broadside has its own loading bar. The loading time depends on how many sailors are on board the ship. You can change your ship's ammunition at any time. Solid balls do the most hull damage, chain shot is good against sails, and canister shot reduces the opponent's crew. On the left, you can see how much ammunition is on board. Solid balls are always present, but you must buy chain shot and canister shot in the cities. This also applies to exploding barrels, swords and muskets. You can drop explosive barrels at the touch of a button. They have a time fuse and explode on contact. If you have enough sailors on board, you can also try to board a ship. But for this to work, the enemy ship cannot be moving too quickly. Therefore, you must either destroy its sails or force it into the shallows, where it must slow down. Importantly, your ship cannot fire while in boarding mode. While you are controlling your ship directly, your other ships will operate independently, but you can still give them tactical commands. These are Attack My Target, support, and swarm out. Be careful with that last tactic. It leads all your ships to surrender, and the battle ends, which can have dramatic consequences for your convoy. One more thing. You can reef your ship's sails just by pressing a button. This will slow your ship and give it a tighter turning radius, which can sometimes give you a tactical advantage.